All right, so I'm going to go through this um, pretty briefly just to talk about um, you know, who we are in case you haven't heard of Xerus, um, a wireless uh, provider for the last 10 plus years, uh, cloud first focused for the last five years in terms of how we deliver that uh, to the edge. We have some unique innovative products that I think uh, fit very well with the riverbed story and, and uh, strategy. And there was a lot of synergies actually before uh, coming into riverbed that were very interesting to, uh, to look at. I'll talk through a little bit about that. Well, the acquisition happened about five months ago and we're in the middle of a lot of integration around that. I'll skip that. Um, so why Zerus? So this is actually a three-pronged question, the way I want to answer it here. So why did Riverbed buy Zerus? Um, why do customers buy Zerus? And why are we talking about Zerus here today? So we can take that question three different ways. I'll try to answer that over the course of the conversation. Uh, a wireless company at the edge, a little bit different than traditional riverbed perhaps, but obviously the expansion of the software-defined uh, story all the way to the edge of the network um, dovetails into what we do uh, at Xerus. So Josh earlier showed a pendulum kind of uh, uh, graphic showing how the edge and the, the hybrid core and the, and the swing back and forth between the two. Um, you can see how that, um, certainly if you have a you know, history in IT, you've seen how that pendulum has swung back and forth. Um, and um, certainly moving towards an, you know, the edge network and edge computing models. Um, Xerus has a very um, significant play here that, uh, that leverages that. If you look at how wireless solutions were designed historically, they were oftentimes uh, controller-based. You know, the intelligence of the wireless network was an appliance sitting in uh, the, the, uh, the IDF, and you would have a bunch of APs distributed across the environment. And then we move to cloud-based systems, which um, have been prevalent for the last five, six, seven years, where you have that control plane in the cloud along with the management, um, but you do end up with a single point of failure. You have a, a dependency there that can cause a challenge. And what Riverbed Xerus really has is something that combines the best of those both worlds, where you can control in the cloud or on-prem, but you have the intelligence already pushed all the way down into the access point. Um, more compute and memory power in the APs to do some very interesting things and turn on some services now that are running actually at the edge of the network instead of um, that intelligence being back in the core of the network. So that's one of the fundamental thing that distinguishes Xerus in terms of how we've architected our product and how it really fits that edge enabled uh, story. Three things that kind of uh, are pillars that kind of uh, describe what we do. Um, the three S's, simple, Deployment, you know, one dashboard as we integrate in with Steel Connect, the uh, Steel Connect manager that Vivek uh, dem demonstrated. The idea is to merge into that common platform, one dashboard. Security, we have SSO integration with Office 365 and Google Apps. So uh, everybody's moving to those kind of cloud based uh, SaaS solutions we have now integrated for single sign on with our Wi Fi. So it's a single seamless process to get onto the network with Office or with Google. And then scalability, um, we have a very scalable platform that goes to the densest networks in the world. So um, earlier it was mentioned uh, Microsoft Ignite um, that's going on right now. Uh, we've, Microsoft's been a customer of ours going back eight, nine years, and they do some of the densest networks in the world. Keynotes with 15,000 people in one room. Doing Wi-Fi is very challenging there, and we've, we've figured out ways to solve that scalability challenge. So I'll, I'll uh, go through those three S's real quick and then we'll, we'll pop into a demo because that's usually the best way of, of really taking a look at the application. So simplicity, cloud-based uh, management, cloud-based provisioning, um, all in one console, access control provisioning, and as we integrate in with Steel Connect, then that broadens obviously the scope of that cloud-based um, solution. Security. Uh, access control is a very big deal when it comes to Wi-Fi, getting users on the network, when you logged into the uh, network here today, Tech Field Day, you, you were logging into a guest portal um, hosted by a Xerus system in the cloud. And actually, we'll take a look at, at, at uh, how much traffic you guys were generating during the, the course of the, of the event here. Um, employees coming online, you know, the rest of us that are from Riverbed obviously are into the corporate network. Um, there's IoT use cases, there's customers, fans, and attendees, and public venues. There's all kinds of scenarios, and we've put this into a solution called EasyPass to really make that as simple as possible for people to get on the network. Is that going to be integrated into the wired side of things as well? 
uh, yeah, we're looking at extending that. We have a set of switches, um, and those will be expanded in the Riverbed portfolio under Steel Connect. And the idea is to roll out that easy path functionality for a much broader set of functions as well. I do like a uh, um, dot one dot one x x yeah yeah I yeah. almost said dot one q. Uh -huh. is it, is it yeah, we support dot, dot one x? x in the in the wireless yeah. solution, and, okay. and then obviously uh, are able to run you know certificates or different types of schemes, right? So okay, it's a uh, it's it's across the product. Cool. Uh, orchestration to the edge. So one of the key things I mentioned earlier in terms of the, um, the power of the platform in putting the compute and memory at the edge of the network and the AP is I can take this morass of devices coming in, IoT, mobile devices, laptops, and really segment that traffic to run security policies, application level policies. So I have corporate traffic, BYOD traffic, IoT, and, and segment that and secure that down. You know, there's, there's uh, many examples of IoT devices getting hacked default passwords, these are unsophisticated devices. I need to lock those down so I can secure them and ensure that I'm not getting uh, compromised. Uh, scalability, this is kind of the, the picture that you get from, from standard access points that, that any vendor does, is uh, APs that support dozens of users. We actually take that to the next level. This is what we're probably best known for historically, but the ability to put four or eight radios into a single AP and scale to thousands of users um, on a device, literally. Uh, Microsoft uses some of those high-density units, for example. Many schools, many businesses and conference rooms or training centers uh, use these devices because we are, there's more and more and more of these devices coming on the network. Uh, I skipped the slide earlier, but it showed IoT, smartphones. I mean, these are the things that are driving uh, massive growth in terms of density uh, as well as traffic. So that's, um, that's one aspect of what we do from scale. The other one in terms of just how we provide a software-defined adaptable edge as well. A standard access point is kind of a fixed configuration. And we've put in software-defined radios that allows us to actually match the clientele. Um, I noticed on uh, every single person in this room was connecting at 5 gigahertz, which is a much faster, cleaner spectrum, which is good news. Well, we can take our solution and actually adapt that and, and, def and uh, move all the radios over to 5 gig if we need. And that will give you a much better uh, connectivity. We have some IoT use cases of customers that run all 5 gig networks. And it's the fastest, best Wi-Fi when you can do that. Uh, another interesting thing that we do is when you have that compute power at the edge, we can actually distribute services like location. So we have an XPS system, think GPS for the indoors you know, over Wi-Fi. And actually, when you distribute three or more APs in an area, they can triangulate and, and calculate location. I'll show that in the demo in a second. Um, and we can do that in a distributed computing model. So all of it's happening at the edge. It's not dependent on a central appliance, which costs a lot and, and takes a lot of resources to operate. And then IoT solutions, you know, massive amounts of devices, the network connectivity needed to, to uh, handle them, and then the storage and the analytics on the back end to work all that data. As we progress forward, we have the ability to run more and more of those apps, you know, in the cloud or at the edge, and, and uh, decide where you operate those based on uh, the requirements of the, of the given business requirement. So ultimately, the merging of those two companies together, one plus one equals three or more, what does that mean? Um, we saw this slide earlier, you know, Xerus fits in the, uh, that middle section there with the Steel Connect solution as part of the wireless access um, to the network um, and extends into many of these other um, solutions as well. Um, Steel Central obviously provides visibility. Uh, we have a lot of data that can feed into that and provide you greater visibility of the network from end to end. <clears throat> how those devices and users are getting on the network and their, um, uh, their service levels, and then how that translates all the way back into the network. Can you talk about your analytics a little bit? Mm -hmm. So I would, I would say that, that, River, that Xerus has really turned into like a big data collection of, of information in the cloud. So it's the user you know, who is coming on the network, what device they're using, the types of applications they're running, the URLs they're accessing, um, the uh, traffic they're generating, all that data is, is stored back in the cloud. And then we're, and I'll show you some of it in the demo, we're pulling that now into analytics uh, widgets that we can provide specific snapshots of that data to Oh, so you're going into what retails. you do with it? So yeah, I can show the, uh, in the demo what that looks like. Yeah, I'd like to see that. So please. things like dwell time, things like you know visitors, recurring users, things like that, 
that could show up, for, especially for retail, for example. They want to know who's coming on the network, how long they're staying, you know, where they're going within the location as well, for example, from a location perspective. So I'll pop into that when we do the demo. Um, I think we showed this slide earlier where Xerus essentially fits into the Steel Connect product family. It provides a software-defined LAN, think of it as, um, and in addition to the software-defined WAN piece uh, to really extend that single policy vision all the way from edge to edge, from the data center out through the WAN all the way to the edge. So when we have the full policy integration, uh, you know, a single click can ultimately push a, a policy that's common across the entire network. What does a customer do that has uh, riverbed APs already? Do they get any, any feature set out of the existing stuff, or is it a replacement? Uh, well, these will augment what, what is already there and eventually replace. I mean, there's obviously, uh, well, there's actually some of these products that will that'll be uh, maintained as part of it. Mm -hmm. um, but Riverbed acquisition of Xerus really was to take that whole enterprise-grade story to a gr much greater level with mm -hmm. respect to what they already had in the place yep. in the portfolio. So, yeah. but obviously there will be a transition, you know, plan in place for those who already purchased them. Yeah, but I imagine so. some features that you would get Maybe not the Wi-Fi coverage and what the additional radios, but some of the other stuff you mentioned, like the identity management and all that stuff, that would still integrate, wouldn't it? Um, we'll, we'll see. I think there's going to be a transition plan for some of those products. Okay. Uh, but yeah, the identity management, that piece is probably the most interesting to extend to these other components. So like mm -hmm. the switching and some of the other yeah. uh, edge devices. Yeah, I mean, that's, that's the one that we've identified as probably the most likely. Okay. okay. Here's just a quick view of the roadmap. So, you know, you have best of breed Wi-Fi solution. You have the SD-WAN solution now adding the LAN and then integrating those two pieces together where I have a common console. Uh, but if I still purchase Wi-Fi, I have the ability to, to move that way as well. So we're doing GUI integration and configuration integration um, first, and then the policy piece would, would come as a second phase to that um, on the roadmap. All right. And I'm going to switch over next to the, uh, the demo and, and show a little bit of what that then looks like in the context of our cloud platform. So first off is uh, provisioning a network, creating a new network and what that looks like. So if you think about it, Wi-Fi is one of the few technologies that you can't virtualize. I can't take APs and stick them in a, in a VM somewhere. They are physically in the environment around the location. There's probably several dozen on this floor. There's probably several hundred in this building, right? So deploying that can be challenging. Um, we have customers with thousands of APs. How do I do that quick and simply? So one of the things we do from a provisioning perspective is create a multi-tenant architecture that makes that as simple as possible. And so I'll just show that here. We walk through a scenario here where this is a dashboard of 32 customers that I'm managing, say I'm an MSP or a large multi-site environment. Let's just create a new customer here, and we will call that um, TFD for Tech Field Day. So imagine um, Tech Field Day is buying some new um, Wi-Fi. And so I'm going to basically spin up a new cloud instance by just creating that, uh, what we call a domain here. And then I'll come in here and edit that domain. Um, I'll assign Joe to be the admin to uh, run that network. Um, and then I will uh, take some access points and actually allocate them to that. So I have these APs here. It says these three APs were assigned. I apply that. And literally that quickly, TFD is now a new site in my cloud that I'm managing. Those access points, when they're shipped to that location, you plug them in, they'll automatically connect to the cloud, zero touch provisioning, download their configuration, and you're up and running. I can go in there and create the templates and tweak that. So <coughs> the provisioning is, is very fast and simple. And now you can see on my dashboard here, um, that site is shown as down because those APs are allocated but not up and running. As soon as they come up and running, they'll turn green. If there's problems, I can drill into these sites, manage those domains, and move from there. How do I get those APs into the system, all those serial numbers? So when they were purchased, they were assigned to that customer directly. Or if I'm an MSP, it would be in my pool. So I pulled from a list of, say, 10 or 20 or 50 or whatever. I can say, these are the ones that I identify for that customer. The drag and drop then allocates it to them. So and the power of that is that the, the MSP does that. They don't depend on us as a vendor to do that. So when we purchase the APs, I don't have to do anything. It's automatically going to get tied to me in here. Yeah. You get an email, and you go in, log in, and make it happen. So it's a very, very quick and seamless process. So are those cool. APs owned by the customer, or are they part of a service? It could be either or. 
So what, what I'm kind of showing you is a model for an MSP where they would buy, say, a, a pool of 100 and have them there. And then, and then when they turn up the new customer, they would just assign those. Say that customer doesn't pay his bill, <clears throat> you can reclaim those APs and put them to somebody so else. So as a customer, I can buy the APs mm -hmm. from a riverbed uh, yes. channel directly. And you can do that directly, right? right. Yeah. So an end customer may not use this view unless they're a multi-site, but an MSP or a service provider might. Mm -hmm. And that's, you know, that's a very powerful um, thing that no other vendor is doing today. That speed and quick, I think it was about 14 clicks to create that customer and, and assign APs. Very, very fast. Um, the next thing I wanted to show you is the, um, the EasyPass portal. So this is the, um, the thing I talked about earlier, getting users on the network. We have Google and Microsoft integration. So single sign-on. So many comp companies today are Office 365. I can, I can basically seamlessly sign on with that, with that single step. Um, I'm going to show you just real quick the uh, guest registration, um, how, quick and, how quick and easy it is to set up this uh, guest portal. And this is basically the same portal when you, under, uh, when you connect it to the Tech Field Day SSID. We are using this um, here. Um, creating these, um, these screens is very fast and easy. I'm just going to load a couple images to kind of give you an idea. Um, I can load up the graphics here, actually select Google, Facebook. There's other different ways of actually connecting to the network. So email might be the, the one that you guys use, right? You entered your mobile number, et cetera. But you could also opt into social media and use that as a, a way of getting in as well. You don't have to create new credentials. And then we can actually pull some of that data. Speaking of analytics, now we have demographic information about the customer, you know, age, birth date, things like that that can be part of that equation. All right. So speaking of that, I'm going to pop over actually to um, a live view of the network here just to see what, um, what's happening. So it looks like 18 people are connected to the network here. We have just a, a local network uh, tech, underscore tech field day that you guys connected to. Um, it looks like 18, 18, 18 of your devices did. Um, <laughs> like Matt Crape, it was the number Busted. one user of traffic. So, Matt, I'm the you, one. You are Have watching the live stream again. Yeah. <laughs> oh, for, for whatever reason, um, a lot of Akamai traffic, but uh, Twitter here is um, actually the second most used. And let's see who is the top user there. That was uh, James Green. Dang. 60 mega Twitter traffic. <laughs> Dog on. So. Yeah, what we, that's the all pictures. I mean, the dashboard's really nice and I whatnot. I know better than to log in any place where they have unique SSIDs. Uh, oh, yeah. <laughs> You're, I mean, the Luckily, dashboard looks really nice from a, mm -hmm. from a user perspective, but what do you, what do you want to do with this data? Right. Well, this, so, all right, that's the, the logical next step. So I have that information now that's told me what's going on. As an IT manager, what do I do with that? So uh, that's where the policy controls come in. This... Uh, DPI engine or deep packet inspection engine that, alloc that uh, detected those applications actually is telling me that, you know, this application might be hogging a lot of my bandwidth in my network. So what we can do is create policies to control that. So as an example, I can come in here and, you know, look at, say, social networking. Maybe I decide that I do want to pick on Twitter for some reason and create a policy related to that. I can select that app and then you know, block it or maybe just rate limit it to a certain level, right? Yeah. So this is ultimately where it goes, is, is that DPI yep. engine that Xurus has, by chance, happens to be the same one that Riverbed licensed. And now that common policy engine actually will make it even easier when we go through the integration process to run those, um, to integrate into Steel Connect Manager. All right. So a use case that'll be fun in the future that's right on the horizon is by having the wireless piece is part of the overall networking orchestration fabric. We know who the user is. Mm -hmm. Let's say that we want to create a, you know, fast lane for a particular user, an executive that's traveling all the time. And every time he or she is going into an office, we make sure that they've got priority at the access layer as well as any apps that they're mm -hmm. accessing over the WAN. Mm -hmm. That's actually possible now where it's based on users. So if you try to do that in a box-centric way, you'd have to know where they were going, change those things on multiple devices, but now you can just have a single policy that's going to make that really easy. Yeah, I like right. how easy you've made this. Yeah. yeah. This is nice. Yeah. That's, that's, that's been the idea, been one of our big focus points of the development is to, is to simplify the process as much as possible. Um, one of the last things here is then just, you know, looking at from a location perspective, 
Wi-Fi is kind of location oriented. You have APs, you have users moving around. We can you know, represent those on the map. Here's the access points and the coverage and the Wi-Fi and then also the users themselves. So here I'm, I'm looking actually at the Zurich uh, office down, down south. You can see the users that are on this network and their approximate location um, as well. So this is using the XPS technology we talked about where the location is actually centrally managed um, and calculated within the access points themselves. Um, this now becomes an initial data point that's used as part of the analytics engine. All right. Um, and then the last piece, um, I know we're, we're going to be short on time, was uh, some of the analytics components here. Um, we've built in um, a number of different um, uh, widgets here that show some of these things. So like here's uh, the dwell time as an example. Um, and then we also have um, the ability to show the visitors that are coming on the network unique um, and uh, repeat visitors recurring. So these are some examples of the data that we can take. We know who's coming onto the network. We know what they're doing, how long they're staying. Um, and this can feed into retailers or others, you know, that they start to make business decisions based on um, these types of, uh, this type of information.